Kanji Yuya works relentlessly as a pharmacist creating cures for illnesses in memory of his sister who died of a tumor. He died of overwork in his sleep, but suddenly awakened in another world and became a boy named Falma de Medicis. Falma is shocked to learn that magic known as Shinjutsu exists, and testing his powers reveals that with any knowledge of chemistry, he can summon all the elements of the periodic table. He toys with the idea that he is suffering from amnesia and persuades his father Bruno to allow him to study again with his tutor Eleanor. He learns that sacred art includes earth, air, fire, water, and nothing else, none of which is extinct. He also knows that no one can summon all the elements and is someone who could be judged unnatural, so he hides his abilities. In addition to his bizarre personality changes, Firma's magical abilities increase almost infinitely, he has divine eyes that can see all disease and injury, and that his body no longer casts a shadow. Eleanor mistakes it for a monster and runs away. Since Fama is still a newbie to her, he asks her to be her tutor again, but leaves her alone if she wants. Eleanor remembers that Panactios is a benevolent being, so she has no fear. Pharmaceutical companies practice in the eyes of God and begin to develop diagnostics and treatments for domestic servants, until Charlotte claims that the only Medici membership is free and medicines from ordinary doctors are expensive. After explaining, he decided to use the drug to make all social classes available. Firma's sister, Blanche, becomes ill with chicken pox. Firma develops cures using Earth's technology, but since no one in this world knows about these cures, he makes Blanche promise to keep them secret. I was surprised at how fast it was, but it didn't look suspicious. To make better use of his divine eye, Firma developed a pocket-sized Leeuwenhoek microscope. Bruno asks Falma to join the Empress's treatment. Falma and Bruno visit Empress Elizabeth, and Bruno concludes that Elizabeth's condition will soon be fatal. Falma secretly used the divine eye to diagnose her with the White Death, so he claimed to Elizabeth that he could save her in front of all the doctors. Firma reveals that Bruno is also suffering from the early stages of the White Death. Bruno attacks Firma, but Firma stops him with a wall of ice, revealing his powers. Bruno realizes that Falma is not the son he once knew and is convinced that Panactio sent Falma a medical revelation. Falma uses a pocket microscope to prove to the court doctor that there are tiny creatures in Elizabeth's lungs, explaining the presence of bacteria. Convinced, Elizabeth agrees to take Falma's medicine for the required six months. Back at his home, Bruno examines his own medical endeavors and his failings as a parent. Fama asks Bruno to continue tutoring him because despite his powers, he still has to learn to be a doctor. Surprisingly, Bruno agrees, admitting that Firma is still his son and takes medicine to cure his own tuberculosis. Although the drug company's treatment of Elizabeth is hailed as a miracle, Bruno warns that his knowledge could be considered heresy, and that someone may have deliberately infected Elizabeth. Elizabeth's court page, Noah, informs Falma that Elizabeth intends to reward him, and Falma decides to open a pharmacy that treats nobles and commoners alike. Elizabeth worries that she is unfit to rule until her firma convinces her that she is still needed. A few months later, Elizabeth made a full recovery. Bruno got new lands, Falma was promoted to royal apothecary and allowed to open a pharmacy in the capital. He was a pharmacist who designed an ideal pharmacy, but due to monologues and misunderstandings, the name of the pharmacy was mistakenly named Parallel World Pharmacy. Almost immediately, Varen, head of the St. Flu Pharmaceutist Guild, tries to undermine the pharmaceutical companies, furious that his drugs are cheap enough for the common man, but is deterred by Eleanor before he can cause trouble. The pharmaceutical company has hired Charlotte as an errand, but they still need someone to manage their accounts and paperwork. Coincidentally, Bruno ended up retiring because his accountant, Cedric, was unable to walk, so Fama hired Cedric and promised to treat his leg. Fama correctly guesses that Bruno purposely retired Cedric so Fama could hire him, and is grateful. In the first month, Pharma has only one customer, Jean, a sailor who buys candy to cure her scurvy. Bruno and Pharma's mother, Beatrice, visits them and Beatrice suggests selling them cosmetics, but Bruno adamantly refuses face powder because women who use it always die young. Pharma is impressed because primitive cosmetics often contain lead, which is toxic when applied to the skin, Bruno said. A pharmaceutical company suddenly has a client, the noble Chloe de Chatillon. He diagnosed her with anemia caused by phlebotomy, a primitive procedure to thin her skin. Pharma creates non-toxic, sun-protecting and moisturizing makeup that Chloe is obsessed with. The pharmaceutical company will soon be inundated with customers craving affordable, high-quality cosmetics. Chloe is very appreciative of the offer to fund another business focused entirely on cosmetics, with Fama as her manager and a young pharmacist who lost her job due to having a child on staff. The pharmacy enacts a maternity leave policy that garners women's immediate loyalty. Fascinated by new makeup, especially lip gloss, 
Elizabeth enacts a law banning the sale of lead-based makeup. Past the she also recommends selling his cosmetic prescriptions to high-end stores, but this would go out of business due to her new law, lest regular pharmacists inadvertently go out of business by selling his medicines. Will slightly increase the price if he realizes he should have thought of himself. Fama and his family visit Bruno's new land, the Principality of Marseille, which includes a harbor and farmlands. At the beach, Fama recalls visiting a Japanese beach with his sister Chi. Branch is suddenly swept away by the current. Firma swims after her and in desperation activates the power that divides the ocean so she can carry Blanche to safety on the ocean floor. Eleanor is shocked that Fama's power was divine art with clearly negative attributes. He didn't move the water, he erased it from his being. Unfortunately, an eyewitness informs the parish and orders are sent to each temple to find the shadowless boy and kill him for heresy. When Fama returns to the pharmacy, two priests are watching over him. The next morning, a carriage broke into the pharmacy, destroying the drugs and filling the store with deep mud. Bruno suspects that someone is targeting the Medici family. Fama is impressed when Jean and his crew arrive to help clean up along with other shopkeepers who thank him for his anti-scurvy candy and volunteer to be good neighbors. Suddenly a woman comes in and claims her father is ill. Fama goes to treat him, but she is lured into a deserted field and confronted by the parish inquisitor. The Grand Inquisitor Salomon and his fellow priests attack Fama, believing him to be an evil spirit in human form, but Fama effortlessly deflects their magical attacks, begging them not to harm anyone. As soon as they see the mark of Panactios on him, they interpret him as the incarnation of their god and quit. Firma performs emergency surgery to prevent Solomon from committing suicide to atone for his sins and to repair the Inquisitor's leg, which was badly damaged during the attack. A few months later, fully recovered and promoted to bishop, Salomon visits the pharmacy, tours the pharmacy, and, out of gratitude for saving his life, keeps his presence a secret from the diocese. I have assured Pharma that he also brings several gifts, including an array of pastries, a sacred staff called Panic Rabdos, and an amulet that can suppress and cast a shadow over the aura of Falma's sacred art. Marie, the daughter of Pierre, the young owner of a pharmacist and member of the Saint Fleuve Guild, has fallen seriously ill. Enraged at his failed attempt to ruin Fama, Varen forbids guild members from getting involved in the business. Pierre could not find a doctor to help Marie, but Pharma invited her to his pharmacy and offered Marie, who had the flu despite her lower class, access to her excellent care and affordability. Returning home, Pierre finds the pharmaceutical company to be the pinnacle of what a pharmacist should be, but he must follow the guild for the sake of his family. Varen is even more upset by the news that Firma is being sheltered by Elizabeth and Salomon. Pierre admits that he brought Marie to Pharma, and that San Fleuve should learn from him rather than look down on him. Varen reveals that one of his children died because a noble doctor refused to treat him, so he never trusts Pharma. And his store was destroyed. Learning of this, Fama invites Pierre to join the pharmacy guild, which he recently established with Elizabeth's permission, so that Pierre can continue working as a pharmacist. With the support of his wife and daughter, Pierre learned Pharma's diagnostic skills and only dealt with Pharma's advanced medicines before opening his new business, Dawn Pharmacy. Empress Her Elizabeth investigates the positive impact of parallel world pharmacies on public health and the prosperity of the empire and decides to further assist Falma in her efforts. Bruno de Medici's poignantly recalls his former colleague and friend Camus de Sade, who was exiled for conducting heinous medical experiments on humans. He receives a letter from his eldest son Pear, announcing an outbreak of a strange and deadly epidemic originating on the island of Panthe. The Isle of Panthe imports goods that can contaminate the annual Sun Flu Fair held in the empire's capital. Bruno asked Fama to investigate, and Fama used the available explanations to identify the disease as the Black Death. Firma, Bruno, and Elizabeth, with the help of fellow students and pharmacists, immediately begin quarantine and medical precautions before Firma and Eleonor leave for Marseille. But now, Camus has returned to the royal capital wrapped in an ominous dark aura. Upon arrival in Marseille, Falma and Eleonore began inspecting the merchant ship, which was impatient to disembark, and the Saint Fleuve, led by Commodore Jean Alain Gavin, Falma's old regular for scurvy treatment. Although no outbreak has occurred in the port itself, Farma receives news that a village called Lesjack has been hit by plaque after the ship illegally anchors to avoid quarantine. Fama drives alone to Lestak in panic rabdos, arriving just in time to prevent the infection from spreading as the desperate villagers leave. With the rank of royal apothecary, he gathers survivors and organizes therapeutic activities in the city, and after completing the initial preparations enters the section where the most important cases are quarantined. The pharmaceutical team, with the help of a few parish members, is working hard to prevent an outbreak of the Black Death, but recognizes that more help is needed. Imperial School of Pharmacy Professor Ruth Gaspar, 
an expert in the taxonomy of fungi and microbes in, is nearing retirement and has been asked by Bruno to help Pharma develop an antibiotic that can be created without the sacred art. Was the parish intercepted several crew members from a rogue ship that had landed with part of the cargo. Falma and Bruno connect the dots with Elizabeth's illness, and conclude that someone is plotting to wipe out the Saint Flu vampire with a malignant disease. This theory was confirmed the next morning when a wanted knight suddenly broke through the gates of the capital and released a large amount of Cyrolith into the city. As Bruno and Elizabeth are discussing this crisis, they discover that Camus has captured the outbreak by killing the King of Netherland and using the country's resources to avenge his expulsion from San Fluf. Bishop Solomon stops the enemy knights who confirm Camus' involvement, but the infection spreads rapidly through the city because plague-carrying squirrels can fly. Fama returns to the royal capital and meets her father again, but Camus infiltrates another world pharmacy and stabs Cedric and Lotta with a poison dagger. Falma and Bruno arrive and while Bruno fights Camus, Falma removes the poison from his friend. When Camus defeats Bruno, Pharma counterattacks using his divine jutsu and the power of Panaclobdos. And destroy Camus and the demonic powers possessing him. The outbreak is then quickly quelled, and the achievements of pharmaceutical companies stimulate rapid advances in medical research. The Sun Flu Festival will go ahead as planned and the parallel world pharmacy will reopen.